So what we want to do now is, is at the end of the day, we don't grow grass just to look for the sake of it. We grow grass to run livestock. We run different forms of livestock to turn that into a product that we can make money from. So what I, my task was, was to take this data and look at, at what's the income that we could earn through livestock as a result of the changes that have occurred in the pasture production. So Fiona has mentioned that there was quality data. That's an example of how it was done. The little pegs are, little pegs are put out on measurement and there's samples cut. So I've, I'm going to use, I'm going to show you the quality data because Fiona hasn't put it up yet. I then use the quality data. I then use the herbage mass data to turn that into animal product and put some economics on it via the animal. So what I'm going to show, the same as Fiona, there's going to be the two sites, Glenroy and Kyora, and we've chosen the years 2012 and 2014. So what you're looking at there now is the Glenroy site in 2012. Um, on the left hand side of, of the graph in red is energy, metabolizable energy. On the right hand side is the crude protein. So those samples were sent off to the feed lab at Wagga and they give us back the results. The other thing they give us as well, which isn't up there but I used, is digestibility. So the five products that are circled in blue is because they were statistically different from the control for both energy and protein. There's one product circled in red, down the right hand head in the dical, it was only significantly different for energy. So you might just have a look at that mentally, where were the, where were the plots? Now I'm going to flick over to 14. Again, energy's this time in green, protein's still in black, and again, we've got five products that were significant for both, and we've got two products that were just significant for compost. Now, this is between 12 and 14, and the one thing to note, and I'm gonna come back to it, is because how we interpret the results, it's important we get this through our head. You'll notice the agri-ash was significant for both in 12, it's only gone over the line for one in, 14, the simple fact was agri-ash had gone over the top. It was put out once, it did a great job for five years, getting into the sixth year it started to lose some impact. The Kyora data, again energy in red, protein in black. We've only got two products there, that's the super and the agri-ash that was significant for both in 12. And when we come to 14, there were the three products that were significant for both, the super, the bio ag blend, and the Dical 64. Right. So that's the quality data. Now we've got that quality data from every year since 2011. For a range of reasons, we just chose those two, 12 and 14 to show. Why didn't we start doing quality earlier? The range of the, the type of products that went out, some of them had liming capacity in them, some were slow release. You really need to put these products out and give them a chance to work and drive some botanical composition before you start doing quality data. That's the reason why we didn't start quality data right at the start. Donna might also add it would have been more submissions for more money. <laughs> Fiona's already put this up. The thing I want you to realise is that, so this is the herbage mass over the whole period. I'm going to work for in 12 and 14. It's only the products that have an asterisk above them in those two years are the ones that I'm going to use. So if a product <laughs> didn't grow significantly more grass than the control in those two years, you find they're going to be blanks on some of my tables I'm coming to. Again, just with this agri-ash, you'll notice if, um, so it's the second from the left, you'll notice the pink and the red years you know, in 2013, Agri-Ash was very competitive at this Glenroy site. It, it backed off a bit in, in 14, but once we come to Kyora, it's very noticeable the difference how Agri-Ash behaved in 2013 and how it's behaved in 2014. It's really gone over the, over the top, and that's influencing some of the results we're going to get. Right now, so that's the, the quality and the herbage data. How did I convert this into animal product? So I took the digestibility information, the energy information, the protein information, and I decided to use lambs as my benchmark for animal production, and I worked out lamb growth rates and daily intakes per head. How did I do that? Product developed by Syro back in 1990 calls grass feed 
We've used it for years. That's what we use. Put the pasture parameters in, it gives us animal performance data. I then looked at the extra food that had been grown, that last two graphs. I assumed of that extra food that the product grew, only 50% of that was going to be consumed by animals. So the other 50% is going back into the soil, into the organic pool. So I then took that extra food and divided it by the animal intake figures, which I worked out up the top. So what I come up with is a possible number of grazing days for that, for that product in that year. Uh, multiply by the number of grazing days by the daily growth rate I had. So what I end up coming up with is a number of kilograms of live weight per hectare produced by, that, by the various products. I chose, and I could have chosen any number, I chose $4 a kilo carcass weight to turn those, that weight of live weight. So I, I took live weight over to carcass weight, I multiplied by a carcass price. Uh, $4 at present is sitting somewhere between mutton and, and um, in fact, it's not far off mutton at present. Lambs at $6 a kilo carcass. To keep some, some reality in it, uh, I subtracted five cents per head per day to cover animal costs. So those plots that were going to run more animals have had to play a greater amount of money in terms of costs of running them. I then subtracted the fertiliser costs per hectare that Fiona put up before. And this gives a dollar ranking. Now, this is not a profit per hectare from the different products. This is a dollar ranking that um, that's, we've worked out through animals. I could change the numbers and I, we're going to change it. it. This is not in your handout because I never forgot put in a handout that it was going to be picked up and pushed around and people would take the wrong messages out of it. So this is, if you like, a weighting of how the different products have performed. So the first screen we've got up here is uh, lamb growth rate, grams per head per day. Products are down the left hand side. You've got the two locations, Kyora and Glenroy, and you've got two years. So we've got 2012, 2013, 14, 212, 214 for the two products. To make it easier for you, the three products in the, the products in red, the red numbers, are the three highest growth rates and it bounces round. You'll notice there's one product that's got the three, in the three highest growth rates for all four years. There's, some other, there's another product that's there three times, uh, and then there are a number of products there once. You will see some products never get into the top three. The blue, so in three of the years, the control plot had the lowest growth rate, and in one year, it was the, the compost two had the lowest growth rate. So that's giving you a, a range of what growth rates, why the number's different between the energy and protein content between years is different. That's why the number's between years. So that's our lamb growth rate data. We take the lamb growth rate data. We now take account of how much extra pasture did those plots grow. And what we've got here now is the kilograms of live weight per hectare that the various products have produced you'll notice that there are a whole heap of gaps in that table. It's because those products in those years did not grow more than the controls, so they drop out of the system. We see a similar trend to what we've seen before. One product's there four times, a couple of products there twice, but we tend to find us the similar products are coming up to the top all the time. The consistency between these um, hold and then the last of the graphs is we've now just put, I've put dollars on that live weight. I've taken off a cost of five cents per head per animal and I've taken off the spreading costs. So we now see that every cell has got a number in it. Some of those cells are negative. Why are they negative? Because the cost of spreading the product was greater than the extra income earned above the control. Some of the products there um, are positive because the income earned was greater than the cost of spreading. And with some products you'll find they'll, they'll oscillate between positive and negative between different years. Uh, what do we find in terms of the trend again? It's been the same all the way through. The sa same sort of products are, are popping up each time. Now, why do we need to put a bit of thought into looking at this? 
We've done a trial where we have put a range of products out at different times. So if you go and pick a year to make your assessment, let's say we pick the year 2014, whatever's done well in 2014 is the definitive answer to the trial. I'm afraid that's not the case. I go back to the AgriAsh product. The AgriAsh product, if I put 2013's data in there, would have been up in the top group with all the other products. In 2014 it's not because we've pushed that product past its time frame. What have we picked up out of this? AgriAsh we get five years out of. Now, there are some other issues whether we, can, uh, we could stimulate AgriAsh again by putting some more sulphur on the system because that might be the limiting but that was outside the range of what we can do with the product. If we look at the, if we look at the bio ag and we look at the dical, Fiona's mentioned these are those are the slow release products which are building. So um, the classic examples, the bio ag up the top, 2014 it's highlighted in red, right? Because of the nature of that product, um, the slow release it's building into the work. Um, the pig manure, it depends when you, when you go in the cycle depends what the answer is. So as soon as you start dealing with products which have got a different nature of application, you've got to be very careful at your point in which you do the assessment. That's why I didn't want this just to go out and for anyone to pick it up. To me, what's this saying? We have a range of products which are doing a positive job in terms of driving pasture production and therefore animal production. We have a range of products which have shown very strongly they're not doing anything. Um, those range of products which are doing things come from a variety of different forms, from the soluble one we've dealt with years, single super, to some of the other products, which is a waste product out of Canberra, which is incredibly important that we use all the waste product we can from around Australia, because the world is not making any more pee. And if we keep dumping pee into the oceans, uh, the generations in 250 years time aren't going to thank us. Right, so reusing, reusing waste out of the human system is a critical source of poo which we need to do. Um, and we've got other products which are based on a slow release. So we've got a range of different products out there which we know that works and as Fiona said in one of the slides there, it's a case of people making the personal and business decision which one of those they want to use to, get, to take them down the path they want to go down. Thank you. Thank you.